Good morning and welcome to Church of the Hills in Evergreen, Colorado. I am Reverend Susan Boucher and we are delighted that you're here this morning. Church of the Hills is a Presbyterian Church USA congregation. We are a people blessed by the Lord with a continued yes to answered prayers in so many different ways during this time of uh, the pandemic. If you're looking for a place, a space, to come in from the chaos outside, out there in the world, and to be reminded that God's love is true and steadfast, that Jesus' grace is with us, that the gift of the Holy Spirit is leading us, then come on in and welcome to this worship service. We'll honor, we'll glorify God, we'll be reminded that we have been equipped to carry his love and his grace into the world. One announcement, there is a bulletin on the website. Please take the time to download it and you can join us in the prayers and in the songs. And let us prepare our hearts and our minds to worship and glorify our God during this moment of musical meditation. Please join me in the call to worship. God, you have given us a dream of your world made whole, a heavenly realm that is near in heart and close at hand, and it is ours to choose each day. May our of con when transformed by your love, grow abundantly into a realm of flourishing for all. Amen. the God of creation is merciful and loving and is inviting us all into a dynamic relationship with God through Jesus. And the truth is that we've all messed it up in the last week or two, that we have found ways to walk away from God and we have found ourselves in places of discord with others, not by intent, not by intent. But our God is inviting us back to return to the Lord, to do a 180 degree turn, come on back to the Lord, and, and to know that when we confess those places, those sins, those ways where we have messed it up, that we will be received with grace and with love. Please join me in the prayer of confession. <clears throat> We confess that we have turned away from you and have not lived with upright hearts. 
forgive us for failing to follow you. Guide our feet to walk in your ways and serve your world. In this time of silence, we surrender to you the sins that separate us from you and from one another. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ Jesus. And Jesus died for us. He rose for us. He sits at the right hand of God and prays for us. In him, the old life is gone and the new life is here. Hear this incredible, joyful news of the good news of Jesus. It is in his name that we are forgiven. And the people of God say, Hallelujah, Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And exchange that peace with one another in your homes and even as you go into the world this week. Remembering the peace of Jesus is with you. Lord, listen to your children praying. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Enlightening God, the unfolding of your word gives light and provides wisdom to all who seek your truth. Open our minds and hearts by the presence of your Holy Spirit that the mystery of your heavenly realm is made evident here on earth. Amen. The New Testament reading this morning is Matthew 13, 31 to 33, the parable of the mustard seed. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It's the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make their nests in its branches. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise, I will praise you, Lord, with
I had taken last week off and my family and I had gone to take the time to self-contain and travel in an RV up to the Grand Tetons. And the last sermon I shared with you all, I had talked about the wildflowers and how we as a people are called to sow the seeds of God's grace and love during these days. And it is the Lord that will help those wild flowers, those seeds to grow, take plant, and uh, be nourished throughout the seasons and grow. Well, as you can imagine, up in the Grand Tetons of Wyoming, there are wild flowers everywhere. It was an extraordinary blessing to see them cast up a mountainside or throughout a meadow, a mountain meadow, or hanging on, literally clinging and hanging on on the bank of the river. So many beautiful perspectives and uh, mesmerizing images of God's grace bringing forth this beauty on earth. Well, Matthew uh, 13, what we read today, this sowing imagery, this uh, planting of seed imagery continues. Jesus is talking to the crowds that have been following him, and he's trying to describe, to provide a parable of what the kingdom of heaven will look like. And he says that this seed, this very, very small seed, a mustard seed, it will be planted. A shrub will grow. A tree will bring forth eventually, and it is from that tree that the birds will come and they will be nourished. That is what the kingdom of heaven looks like. It's an incredible, beautiful image. And as all of the hardships of what's happening in our culture, it is helpful to remember, to know that the kingdom of God, that those seeds of compassion, those glimpses of heaven, that extension of God's grace, that friendly person who comes alongside and virtually places their arm around you, that God's grace and God's love is there. It is there. The kingdom of heaven, it can start so that's in that small seed and then begin to flourish, begin to grow bigger. And the truth is that it's incredibly hard to see many days during these days. Right before this particular parable, Jesus was, uh, had a, a similar a par a parable where he described that uh, a beautiful seeds were planted, but during the night, uh, someone came in and planted weeds along through with them. And that as those uh, weeds grew and as those fruitful plants grew, um, it wasn't until the harvest time that that owner of that field kept those growing next to each other. And this was an example of what's going to happen for the Christ follower. We're going to be walking through the world. We're going to be sharing God's love. And yet there will be this hardship, these thickets all around us that what we're experiencing, the hardships of these days are anticipated. But we are to stay the course. We are to remain faithful. And isn't it, isn't it hard right now? I don't need to spend a lot of time on the challenges. Pandemic, 
news sources, hardships for families, parents not knowing when, child, when and if children go back to school. There's a lot going on, and we don't have to go very far or to be in too many conversations to just feel the anxiety levels rise. One of the, well, the mission of Church of the Hills is that we are a place where you can come into and in worship, then be equipped to go out into the world. We come in to worship, to worship God, to remember God's faithfulness, to remember the teachings and the blessings of Jesus, to be equipped in the Holy Spirit, remember our waters of baptism, gather around the table, and then equip to go out into the world to share the kingdom of God, to plant those mustard seeds. And it's hard because we don't always get to see how big that mustard seed will grow, planting that seed of grace, that seed of love and faith. And as I was preparing for today, I, uh, there was a particular pastor, his name, he's a retired pastor, and he's a contributor to Preaching Today, which is a journal for preachers, and his name is Reverend Lee Aiklove. And he want, he reminded, well, it was written for preachers, but let's acknowledge this is, this is good for all, that God's grace is what builds us up. It is God's grace that equips us to go out into the world and to have the strength to continue to share the love of God, the compassion of Christ, the peace of Jesus with others. That happens through God's grace. And when we're out there doing it, when so many people are also feeling anxious and worried, well, we need to be reminded of how close that grace is. And Reverend Eclove wrote this. We are stronger and abler than we feel. For God's word of grace is able to build you up. That living grace running through our veins continues recreating us. That living grace running through our veins, continues recre recreating us. We, so, we know how essential oxygen is for our lives. COVID reminds us of this every day. It's necessary. It pulsates through our body. It helps all of us, helps our organs function. We need it, our breath. And what Reverend Aiklo says here is that God's grace runs through our veins like that oxygen. God's grace is as close as your pulse. Feel your heart beat. God's grace in Jesus is with you. It's a powerful reminder for these days. It's a powerful reminder that, yes, there's going to be turmoil. There's going to be uh, weeds that try to squelch out to the kingdom of heaven and those who are commissioned to carry out Jesus' kingdom work. But we are new creations in Jesus. We are people who have God's grace pulsating through our veins, purifying, recreating us, strengthening us, giving us all that we need for these days. powerful message that 
those who follow Christ are gifted with God's grace. It is there throughout the scriptures. <coughs> in our Thursday night group, they just finished uh, reading and studying the book of Romans. And uh, one of the participants shared with me that one of the things that struck them so profoundly was that Paul never met, or had, he's writing the book of Romans before he has met the church in Rome. Expanding open the grace and the breadth and the, the width of how far God's love can uh, travel. What I mean by that is we, it's easy to see ourselves as those people to whom Paul is writing. And in chapter 8 of the book of Romans, he wrote, all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. We're not in a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but we have received a spirit of adoption. We are God's children with God's grace pulsating through our veins. That's not in scripture. I'm integrating that in. Then Paul says, when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, and heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with them so that we may also be glorified with them. The spirit helps us in our weakness. Y'all, we are the ones being sent to share that mustard seed of, God, of the kingdom of heaven with others. We are the ones who are being called to share compassion and love and forgiveness and patience with others. And Paul's letter to the Romans reminds us that we are as close to God and we are gifted with the Holy Spirit when we cry, Abba, Father. The love of God in Christ is as close as the very blood pulsating, oxygen pulsating for our own veins. We can be confident, confident, that, yeah, it may look like a mustard seed. It may look like a small plant that won't survive. But then all we have to do is lift up our eyes and see the glorious ways in which the Lord is surrounding us with wild flowers. The glorious way in which the kingdom of heaven will, is seen here on earth, standing tall, sharing God's love with God's people. So be confident. Stay the course. You're spinning out. Feel your pulse. And remember, God's grace is that close. And the people of God say, Amen. Please join us in singing Amazing Grace.
thank you to everyone who has continued to support the ministry of Church of the Hills. Your tithes, your offerings, your volunteer time, and your prayers. All of it matters. Thank you. If you have let the tithe or the offering slip, then I do invite you to please take the time to go to our website and you can mail in uh, your, either your tithe or your offering. We are receiving them and we are appreciating your ongoing support. It's important to remember that uh, this is the Lord's, these are the Lord's financial gifts. So let us take the time to dedicate those tithes and offerings to our God. Please join me in prayer. God of grace and God of glory, we thank you for your continued yes for the Church of the Hills ministry. We thank you for your continued and bold yes to the way and you way in which you are inviting us to share your love, your grace, and the message of your Son with others. So we ask for your blessing upon these tithes and offerings. We ask that they will be used only for your purposes and that you will continue to gift us with the wisdom of how to use them to your glory and to your kingdom work. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take the time to pray together as a people of God. Please join me in the prayers of the people. It is your promise, Jesus, that from that mustard seed, the kingdom of heaven will grow. We rest upon that promise. We place our faith and our trust upon your promise. We are reminded by Matthew, the same man who wrote this, these words, recorded this parable, your parable, for us, that he concludes his gospel by saying, reminding us of your great commission to continue to go into the world, baptizing people in your name, teaching them, of, teaching them your words, and remembering that you are with us until the end of the age. When we begin to doubt that you're with us, help us to take a breath, feel, feel our pulse, and know that your grace through God is, and your, through your grace is that close. Your love is that close. Your peace is that close. Your compassion is that close. And you keep recreating us to your glory. As Americans, we lift up and pray for our country. We play, pray for our political parties. We pray for our elected officials. We pray for our medical providers. We're praying for the wisdom of those who are in positions of influence and power. We pray, O oh Lord, that your will will be done and that you will lead us to speak up when we need to speak up, and you will lead us to be praying and laying down in prayer when you are leading us to lay down and pray. We thank you for gathering us as a congregation at the foot of your cross, remembering that our identity is first in you as your beloved children. So continue, Lord, to please strengthen us and fortify us we we'll pray for those who are in the margins. The margins, there are just so many, so many shadows right now. There are those who are unemployed and uncertain of what will happen. There are those who um, are unsure of what will happen if their children can't go back to school. There are those in other countries who continue to be persecuted because they proclaim your name. God, give us the strength to remain focused on you. Help us to cut out the static and remain focused on your purpose, sharing your love with others. We, pray. we are grateful that you have given us a prayer. 
It is a prayer that unites us with those who have gone before us, and it is a prayer that those who follow us will join us in saying. We now unite our voices, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, how will be thy name? In thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And the people of God say, Amen. Many of you know Reverend Les Avery, and he has a powerful benediction, and I was reminded of it in anticipation of this day, and I'm going to share it with you again. As you leave this place, know that almost everyone you meet carries a heavy load. Scratch beneath the surface of almost any life, and you will encounter tremendous pain. It is there. So be good to yourself and kind to your neighbor. And don't be afraid to put your arm around your own shoulder or that of a friend. Go now in the love of Jesus and celebrate. My beloved, the God of grace and the love of Jesus Christ in the companionship, the direction, the gift of the Holy Spirit are with you. And the people of God say, Hallelujah, Amen. Amen.